everyone, I'm Nicole and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about surf filmmaking, particularly dealing with water housing. So I've had experience with two different sets of water housing. One is the Aquatech housing, base housing for Canon T6. The other is Aquatech housing for A7 II um, for Sony. And so let's delve right in. Are each of the main parts of the housing. So you've got your base part of the housing and then you've got different ports that you can use. Canon base housing that I started with for the T6. Uh, it's your more simple and basic housing. Um, this one in particular, it comes with the jack that goes into the side of the camera. Here's the camera that I use for this housing. So I lift out the side like so, plug it in here, and there you go. So I would connect in the plate to the bottom of the camera. Um, you want to have a screwdriver handy. And then you would slide it into the housing and then you would put your backing on and your port on. We've got our backing, which is this right here. Uh, pretty simple, a little scratched up. I've used this one in the making of my last surf documentary, so it got plenty of use. Um, if you do drop it, there is a chance that something like this could happen to it, which happened to me. Um, it still works, still functional. It doesn't go through. I'd say it's pretty durable, but essentially you strap this in with each of these parts here. So these basically, they're like a latch. So when they're down, they're like so. You lift up, press out, put it in, tighten it, put it back down, snap it in. So that's what you do for all four corners. Um, once it's in, you notice that this is all glass. The good thing is you can see what you're doing. You can see if there's water in there, which is critical. You want to check that. I've never had water in there unless I've put it in there on purpose when I'm cleaning it afterwards. That's the good news. So you want to invest in quality water housing. Second thing you want to note here is that this backing, because it has no controls or anything, you've got what you've got. In other words, it's base housing, it's lower end, it is more affordable. However, if you're just doing photos, you'll have no problem at all. A lot of times what you can do is you can preset on land and decide like, hey, in today's lighting it looks a little cloudy, so let me set my aperture to this, my ISO to this, whatever your typical shooting team is. And then you don't have to mess with it, and that's the beauty of it, is you just go in the water, you take as many shots as you want until your battery dies, and you're like, I used it with this P10 port. It's the basic ones, it comes with the base housing, it's a flat port. So you've got flat port, and then you've got the round ports like so. This one I've got covered so don't scratch it up. Um, but essentially you'll want to make sure you don't have a bunch of water droplets on this. A big thing is you'll learn from experience. You can either dunk it below, you can put candle wax, there's like a bunch of different methods for that. But you'll get to a point where you're comfortable with it, you're using that, and then you will want to use the trigger. So the trigger is really useful, especially when you have base housing. That's why it typically comes with it in base housing, because when you plug that jack in, like I displayed earlier, and you put the base um, covering on the back, and you've got your port in the front, you're like, okay, so how am I going to control this camera? Um, how am I going to even take a photo, or let alone a video? And we'll go over that in a moment. So here is the trigger that came with the base housing. Essentially you end up putting the focus and the take buttons in here and then it connects up. You basically put it in the bottom of here, there's like different screws and um, they give you like these little doohickeys that allow you to tighten it. So you do that, you get these in place, um, then you put this within here so it fits. Oh, if I have multiple hands this will work easier. It fits like so, goes in here, focus, take. Okay, so you say, okay, Nicole, we get the point. This one's the simple one. Now, what about the complex one? The complex one is your upper end housing. That's going to be the one that doesn't come with the P10 and you have to choose your own port, whatever you wanna use. 
Um, and for me, I really wanted to get these over under shots. I saw like all these people taking these cool shots where you can see like the water and you can see the surfer and it's like you could see both even if it was like down below and a lot of times like when I was using this P10, I would duck under a wave and I'd be like, oh, I can get this cool shot and then it turns out just like green and white and I'm just like, this is not what I saw when I went under that wave. And um, the reason is because when you look at this, like unless you have like attached lighting, it's not gonna get lighting because it's shaded. Like when you go under, unless you point it up like that, you're not gonna get that light that you're looking for that you see under the water because it's blocked out. You've got this black round thing around it. So of course you're not gonna get that lighting. So that's where the next port comes into play. This is the, the PD-85. Um, I did get this cover for it because First off, I tend to scratch things. If you notice, like, the backing here was scratched. So this is scratched up, and the P10 is scratched up. This is from the inside of the lens, but still, I tend to scratch things. So, when I invested in a more expensive version that was circular, I was like, there's no way I'm not gonna scratch this up, so I'm gonna get a cover to help minimize that. So it's pretty sturdy and stuff, but the difference is that I'm going to be able to get those over under shots because look at how much light can now penetrate through. That's going to make a huge difference and you're going to see it in the photographs. In order to see that difference, you also have to shoot with a different lens. So it's not just going to be the same lens that I was using in the port, in the flat port, like so. That's where you can pull out your fisheye. If you pulled out a fisheye in this, first off, because I use the fisheye adapter on a 28, um, which makes it longer, you would have to get some extension rings, which is where this comes into play. The good thing about the extension rings, and since both of these housings are like similar in their type of port, is that I can use it on either of the housing. My um, lens for like the adapter for the fisheye is for the newer housing, so I'll be using it in the newer housing with that new PD85. But in order to make that work, I have to have an extension. And that extension is this 24 ring right here. And this could be used here to extend this as well. And the way it works, I'll just show for simplicity on here, is that you're gonna twist this into place once it tightens and you don't see this white anymore, and you test it to make sure there's no leakage. You then put it into the main part of the frame and then it works in unison. So it makes it longer, you're able to use it shorter and longer. So where I was having these issues where it would scratch it up, now I can just put this on and problem solved. We've got this lovely bag that came initially and it's just got some grease and a couple parts. I recommend always having a bag. Maybe this isn't the most eco-friendly, but this is what it came with. Um, you basically take these parts, put them in a bag so you don't lose them. They're tiny. When you take this apart, it's pretty like you're like, okay, Nicole, why would I take this apart? Well, the main reason I take this apart is if you're in a travel situation where you're in carry-on only and you do not want to leave your housing in your checked bag, or if you're even checking a bag, you definitely don't want to put your valuables in your checked bag because you might never see it again. So to deal with that, I put this inside of here, put the, well, actually I put the PD10, I put the 10 length port in here and then I put this on top of here. I wrap them up, of course, and then it condenses so I can fit it in a book bag and then I can take it with me. So I put my camera and all my valuables in there with electronics. The other thing you'll notice is that when you get different types of cameras, you have different types of mountings. So these mounts, they kind of have like similar mechanisms, obviously, but they're different in size, different in shape to fit the bottom of the camera. And so you're gonna notice that so you don't mix and match them. Same with the cords, they have different size jacks that go into the cameras. So like when I got this, I figured like, oh, I'll just be able to use the same one. And then I opened up the side of the Sony camera and I was like, nope, that's not gonna work. So you do need to be conscious of that, just so you're not expecting one thing and seeing another. And now it's time to look at the other backing. This is your more complex one. This is the one that goes into the A7 II. This one, of course, it's got this is basically just foam, but it's laid out to like notify you. This is the eyepiece. This is where the eyepiece goes. Like all these pieces are supposed to line up and then you can like twist it one way to like adjust your ISO from what I've heard and then um, basically put it in place. One of the things I do need to warn you of is that video on the A7 II is a side button. 
this does not have any side buttons. It would have to be like over here and prodding that way. It does not have one. So you will have to figure out how to reset your buttons. A lot of what I do is in water surf filmmaking. So I'm shooting someone in a barrel or I'm going off of a reef break. So like for instance, when I'm shooting in J Bay this coming year, it's gonna be like, okay, Nicole, like how are you going to do this? Because you have to go through keyholes. It's like a 30 minute ordeal to like get out there safely. And then if you only set it on like 16 minute intervals, like when I was filming with this wonderful handy dandy T6, it was like 16 minutes. So it was in and out, especially with that base housing. I figured like the later housing with the A7 II, it would be like, you have these controls, so now I'm gonna hopefully be able to control video. And that was kind of the idea behind it. So instead of lifting the backing, doing this over and over again, I'm hoping to be able to customize one of these buttons, particularly the C3 one, to make it video or control the shutter so that way I can start the video and end the video. Because even though the A7 II doesn't have the best battery life, I still need it to work long enough to where I can start and stop the video from in the water. And that was a big step for me. It was like, this is why I would need to upgrade my housing the way that I did is because I needed to be able to safely control that because I wasn't in a situation where I could just walk in and out of the water. It's not like I'm just shooting shore break. I'm out there in the heavy waves in the middle of the ocean, like 20 minutes out. So it's like, it's not just like walk in and out. It's like you've got three keyholes and you gotta get through those three keyholes and if you don't land it just right, or if you're trying to get in and out fast, you're not in the safest situation. And you're like being pummeled by waves. So. The best way to kind of deal with that is to make sure you're prepared for the elements, make sure you invest in good quality housing, check it before you go in the water, the last thing you want is for it to leak. So do that check when you first get it without your camera in it, make sure you do your adjustments on land. Advocate for making sure that you test everything before you go in the water. So check your shutter, check your aperture, check your ISO. Make sure that everything is how you would want it to be based on the day. And then it's way less to worry about when you're in the water. And it can just save you so much time because you already have it shot like the way you want it, regardless of whether you're using the base housing or if you're using the more complex housing. You're going to find it so much easier if you have everything preset to what you think it is. And then if you have to make those minor changes, you can do it through the autofocus and just um, changing your focus on your shutter. Or if you've got the more complex controls like with the A7 II housing, you can go in and make those changes in the water, but they're only gonna have to be minimal ones, which is much less of a headache when you're in the water, bobbling around with waves, trying to shoot the surfer. If you're trying to change all your settings, you're much better to do that on land. So to do that on land, um, kind of the best way I've seen is like, if you see someone on the shore, you're like doing like your final touches, you see someone on shore a couple feet away, they're about the distance that it would be to the barrel when you're on that side shot. That's what you wanna focus on. You wanna focus on them, so that way it's not focusing on these random objects like, oh, here's the peak of the wave, we're gonna focus on that and not on the surfer. You want it to be focused so that you know where you shoot, where it's going to land, and you can position yourself to be where that surfer is going to be. Another thing that's really neat that you can do is you can go to like be a certain distance away from like a license plate or some sort of sign, and you can make sure that you can read it and then you know you're focused on it. So those are my tips for today. I hope you found it useful and I hope it helps you in your decision making with your housing. Water housing is definitely an investment. It's expensive. I would say your best bet is to make sure that it's something you really wanna do before you go out and invest in it. But I would also recommend that even though it did cost me more to upgrade from the base housing to like what I currently use for the most part, it was a good learning curve and experience using that base housing because I didn't have to worry about all these different things that could come into effect. I only had like my settings on land and I had to let that determine my day. So if I messed up, I felt it that much more. And then I'd be like, okay, now I'm not gonna forget that. So that really helped with my learning curve because otherwise if I had initially gone to having these types of controls, I'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Just press this button, press that button. Um, so it was definitely 
a good experience to start with that base housing and then you work your way up. It's sort of like if someone were to go out and buy a Sony A9 and it's like their first camera ever, they're not going to appreciate all the little monotonies of a camera and they're not going to really ha learn how to actually work the camera and how to get better. It's just going to be like, oh, the camera's better, so I must be better. No, it should be that no matter what camera you're shooting from, even if it's from your phone, if it's from a T3 Canon, regardless of what it is, it's about how you learn how to use the tools that are given to you. So if you are provided with a camera on your phone and that's it, you can work with it. You can work with the settings, but it's going to take trial and error and a lot of learning. And it's just like that when you move up the ranks. So I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm hoping to make a few more videos like this to help, and look forward to answering your questions down below. Thank you.